Hello guys, this is another pack filled message. Um, I was watching a video from Mike with On Point Preparedness. I know some people don't like him because they think that he is still in the Hebrew Roots movement. But I know for a fact that he has denounced the Hebrew Roots movement. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And the reason why I know that is because when I was going through the Hebrew Roots Torah thing and wondering, you know, the real name of Jesus and, oh my gosh, the law, law, law stuff and the Hebrew Roots thing, I was kind of going through the same thing that Mike was. He had some Hebrew root friends. I had some Hebrew root friends and we were kind of getting into it and then realized later on that the Hebrew roots movement was, was not good and it wasn't, um, of Christ. And at the same time that I realized it, Mike came out and denounced the Hebrew roots movement and did a whole like two or three videos about why the Hebrew roots movement is wrong and um, and he really helped me out by doing those videos. And so I just wanted to say that, um, that he has denounced the Hebrew roots movement that he used to be in. Um, because a lot of people are like, Oh, why are you watching him? He's a Hebrew root guy. No, he's not. Okay. Um, he got tripped up in it just as I got tripped up in it and he's helped me. He helped me kind of see the light while I, while Jesus was kind of helping me at the same time, see the light on the deception of the Hebrew roots movement. And the other thing about the Hebrew roots movement thing that I noticed that I'm just going to add on here, the people that I knew from the Hebrew roots movement that are here on YouTube on their videos, they're very, you know, they act like they're very positive and they're really happy and they're doing all this stuff and they're doing everything right. And they're, you know, um, 100% abiding by the law and their law, law, law and all of this stuff. But when you talk to them on the phone and, you know, on the phone with them, when they're not on screen on video, it's a completely different story. They're very sad. They're smoking weed. They're doing drugs. They're fornicating. They want to commit suicide. And it's just a very, very burdensome the Hebrew roots movement is very, very burdensome. So I just hope and pray that you guys aren't getting caught up in this Hebrew roots movement thing that's going on. But anyway, I will put a link in the description below of the Mike with the on point preparedness, the video that he did today. Um, so you can go through all of the points that he says, but everything that he said today about this Donald Trump QAnon movement that's going on with this Q these people that call themselves QAnon or Q um, was really interesting. And I kind of wanted to go through some of the points of the video that I thought was interesting. Um, he talks about a post. Um, Mike talks about a post from Facebook that he saw from a, Q per, a QAnon person. And supposedly this person is a Christian, this QAnon person. And basically... What this guy says is that supposedly QAnon is Trump giving secret messages out to the world. And somehow he's using the CIA or has created some CIA major operation to take out the global elitist people like the Pope and Hollywood type figures um, with this virus. Um, I think that's very far-fetched. Um, but it was interesting the way Mike was talking about it and how it was like a lot of red flags were going off about it. And, um, according to this proclaimed Christian QAnon person, they were saying that this major operation is a great awakening. Um, and we all know that the term great awakening is like a, an Illuminati, a luminous term that the Illuminati use, the great awakening. So that was kind of another red flag about this QAnon message from this Christian QAnon message. I recently saw a video a couple months ago where a military man was wearing a QAnon patch that has just the Q patch. 
Um, so I just kind of wanted to throw that on there. So that was kind of interesting that a military man, literally Donald Trump was, I can't, I can't remember what video it was called, but it was, I think it was just a regular like news video where they were asking him questions and he was outside of this military plane and there's two military guys standing there. And while Trump was answering, um, journalist questions, there, the military guy in the background had a, a QAnon patch on his vest. So I thought that was, that's, that's very interesting that the military is involved with this major operation. Okay. Um, so it's very kind of like, okay, I'm just kind of thinking, just kind of thinking and throwing out my opinions, you know? Um, and I recently, in the beginning of March, Trump went out to, I believe, one of the Carolinas, North or South Carolina, to do a rally. And when he was out there, he was like, um, where are the trolls? We're trolls. Uh, where are the trolls? We're trolls. You know what I mean? So it's like, and trolls are known for giving secret messages or having secret cults and things like that, like on YouTube and social media type platforms. So it's like, I'm kind of like putting two and two together here. And I'm like, this is kind of weird, you know, kind of some red flags going off here, guys. Um, you know, supposedly there's this secret message, QAnon, Trump, major operation going down, and then a couple months later, Trump comes out and says, uh, I'm a troll, we're all the trolls, we're trolls. And, uh, so that was kind of weird, because like I said, on social media platforms, trolls are known for having their secret message cult type activities going on. So I thought, that's kind of linking up in a weird kind of way, you know, um, just some thoughts, just some opinionated thoughts of mine, just saying, um, and not to even, just not even that, like, how childish is that? The President of the United States is, I'm a troll, la, 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 la. like, it's so childish. Our President of the United States is a troll. Think about that. He admitted he's a troll, that he trolls people. Wow. I'm embarrassed. That's embarrassing. Um, okay, so moving on. Um, so Israel and the Christian people are putting so much faith into Donald Trump, it's ridiculous. They're putting all of his hope, all of their hope and their faith in this man. They're borderline worshiping him and putting him up on a pedestal and borderline worshiping this guy. Uh, Israel brought out, Israel thinks that he's going to bring peace to the Middle East and he declares Jerusalem as the, the, the capital, uh, of Israel. And Israel comes out with this coin that proclaim, and they proclaim that he's the Messiah. If, if Jamatria, Kabbalah, the Jews do there in Israel, um, think that he's the Messiah, according to the Gematria and Kabbalah. Um, they come out with this coin that puts him on, they put Trump's face, Israel puts Trump's face on a coin with an image of King Cyrus. So they think he's like this King Cyrus Messiah type guy. Another big big red flags, okay, um, when they were talking about Gematria to Donald Trump and how, oh, he's this Messiah Cyrus guy, they were like, ask Jared Kushner about it. Jared Kushner, being a Jew, knows all about the Kabbalah and Gematria. Ask him about it. You know, Jared Kushner, the one who lives on 666 Street. Um, and I recently, through an article, read something about how Jared fought tooth and nail to keep the, um, 666 building, um, that he lives in. So, um, a lot of red flags there. Um, so Mike, with on part preparedness, continues to go through some things. 
he goes through uh, uh, one of the Donald Trump's president, one of President Donald Trump's statement about the LGBT. Um, a lot of people are like, well, Donald Trump says God bless all the time, so he must be a Christian. And he went to Alabama and he signed Bibles for people, so he must be a Christian. You know, who goes out and signs Bibles like they are the author of the Bible? You know what I mean? Like, who goes out and signs Bibles like they're an author? You know what I mean? Like, I've never seen anybody go out and sign Bibles. Now, I might see somebody from church give somebody a Bible and be like, you know, the page in the front of the Bible that says, this Bible has been presented to so-and-so from so-and-so. You know what I mean? But he's literally signing them like it's a freaking... You know, like when you go to a book meeting where there's authors there and they sign their book for him and then they sell their book to you or they give the book to you, you know, like he's literally signing Bibles in Alabama. And this was way back. This was like a year or two ago in Alabama signing the Bible like he's the author. You know what I mean? I've never seen that before. I'm like, what? And people are like, oh, it's so great. You know, he's signing Bibles. What's such a good thing? Like. Can you not see the deception of the wolf in sheep's clothing here? Anyway, so, um, so Mike talks about the president's statement about the LGBT and he, you know, oh, well, he's such a Christian, so he must be against the LGBT, but yet there's a video and pictures of him holding the LGBT flag where he's supporting the LGBT. And in this statement, he talks about how he supports the LGBT. And he's not helping anything. I, I don't hear him talking about trying to get the drag queen story hours out of these libraries. I haven't heard Donald Trump say one thing about this drag queen story hour, queer kid stuff, drag queen, homosexual people that are indoctrinating sexual things to our children sexual homosexuality things to our children and i i haven't do seen it heard donald trump speak against any of that stuff you know and people are like well he says god bless he says god bless you and god bless america so he must be a christian right well i've learned from just people who say they're christians on youtube to be a wolf in sheep's clothing they'll say God this and God that, but they're not willing to say Jesus. And I haven't heard Donald Trump say the name Jesus at all. Okay, so that's another big red flag just by um, experience from the wolf in sheep's clothing type people on social media. They're willing to say God this and God that. But they're not willing to proclaim the name of Jesus or Yeshua or any name of Jesus for that matter. Whether it be Hebrew, Greek, Latin name. They're not willing to proclaim the name of Jesus in any way, shape, form, or fashion. They might say God bless. They might say God this and God that. But they're not willing to use the name of Jesus. And I haven't heard him say the name Jesus. Um... And saying God bless doesn't make you a real Christian. Going to church doesn't make you a real Christian. Christian taking in holy communion with the wine and the little piece of bread it's not does not make you a Christian. And Donald Trump was on video saying, "Well, you know, I go to I am a uh, Protestant Presbyterian, and I do holy communion, and it makes me feel so cleansed." And just to throw this in here, don't you see him doing the 6-6 six, six symbol a lot? I mean, he's always doing the 6-6-6 six, six, six symbol all the time. All the time in his rallies. Always. I see every time he does it. He's like he has to do it at least once. Um, You know, and maybe that's just by habit when you're speaking. You just do that. But he does it a lot. Um... There was a video that Mike brought up from Mike from On Point Preparedness in his video where he was all like, I got the man on video taking the Lord's name in vain and so-called Christians 
in the crowd are clapping. They're like, woo, when he takes the Lord's name in vain. Mike has videos about that on his channel where literally Donald Trump takes the Lord's name in vain and people are cheering. Uh, a, a bunch more red flags. And when Donald Trump starts, starts talking about his Presbyterian Protestant beliefs and Holy Communion and all that, he talks about the great and he says the great. So he's propping this man up on a pedestal, Norman Vincent Peale. And it's, 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 it's known that Norman Vincent Peale is a 33 degree Mason. It's, it's, it's known that Norman is a 33 degree Mason. It's, it's, it's not some secret that this man, Norman Vincent Peale, which was Donald Trump's pastor, the great Norman Vincent Peale in Trump's words, is a 33 degree Mason. Okay. So more red flags. There was a reporter that asked uh, a journalist or news reporter that asked, which is on video on Mike with on point preparedness video that he did today, which I'll put in the link in the description below where a reporter asks him, have you asked for forgiveness? Basically, have you repented? And he said, Donald Trump said, well, I'm not sure I have. Um, if I do something wrong, I just try to fix it and I try not to do wrong it anymore. Um, so Trump hasn't asked for forgiveness from God or he's not sure he's asked for forgiveness from God. Isn't that what repentance is? Isn't that part of becoming a Christian is, you know, asking, saying you're sorry, asking for forgiveness repenting, changing your mind, turning away from your sins, believing on the Lord Jesus, which he's never proclaimed. I mean, you people think just because he says, God bless you and God bless America and go signs a couple Bibles and passes a bill so kids can read their Bible at school or pray at school, I should say, makes him this Christian man. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. He signs these bills to try to make him look like he's a Christian when really he's not. You know what I mean? And as far as the bill that he signed for kids being able to pray in school, you shouldn't have to sign a bill for something that we should already have the right to do. That is freedom of speech, freedom of religion. We should, you shouldn't have to sign a bill for that to happen in America. We already should have freedom of speech and freedom of our religion. Why should you have to sign a bill to do that? He's just doing it to make himself look good, to make himself look holy. Cause he's trying to get all these Christian people together. Wolf and she's clothing, very deceptive. Um, Paula White, she said that Jesus is not God's only begotten son. This is Trump's spiritual advisor, Paula White, is Trump's spiritual advisor. And she doesn't even think that Jesus is God's only begotten son. What? So there are a lot of red flags here. Okay. And then Mike goes on to describing this, uh, interreligious church. That Trump goes to and interreligious means that, you know, you pray for something, whether it be praying for your country or praying for one another or praying for something. It doesn't matter whether you're Buddhist or you're Hindu or you're Christian or you're whatever religion you are, just pray. That's what an inter interreligious church means. And that's what Trump does. He goes to this inner interreligious church and prays and goes to this church and everybody's like, oh, he's a Christian. He's a Christian right? But they bash po the Pope for being an interreligious church. The Vatican is an interreligious church. They're for the LGBT. They're, uh, worshiping the saints. They worship Lucifer. They believe all religions are all good in the hood, the Vatican and the Pope. But, oh, but when it's Donald Trump going into an interreligious church, it's different, right? So, you know, Christians, real, you know, wannabe Christians are like, they're really fooled by this. They're fooled because they're not 
reading their Bible. They're not looking for the wolves and sheep's clothing deception type things. You know, somebody can say, God bless you, and that automatically means they're a Christian. Somebody can go to a church, and uh, inter interreligious church, and oh, well, they're automatically a Christian. They sign a bill for prayers in school, which should already, you shouldn't have to sign a bill for. Oh, well, that makes them a Christian. They go down and they sign Bibles like they're the freaking author of the Bible or at an ridiculous and think that he's a Christian. It's all wolf and sheep's clothing type deceptions. And I don't understand why Christians aren't seeing that. I mean, there are evangelists out there that borderline worship the ground this Trump walks on and they're not seeing it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I just, I don't get it. Um, and this political agenda is outrageous. It's outrageous on both sides. It's, it's completely out of control. It's crazy. It's twisted. It's out of control. Ridiculous. Um, and people are like, well, he appointed judges against abortion. He appointed judges against abortion. And it's like, okay, great. He appointed judges against abortion. Okay, so we're, we got the ball rolling. Where's the bill? Where's the bill against abortion? Where is it? That's what I mean. He's making these little steps and he's doing these little things to make himself look good. Make himself look like a Christian. To try to get people fooled and deceived. Do not be deceived. And, uh... Mike from On Point Preparedness talks about how both sides are very extreme thought processes on, on both sides between the QAnon, uh, Donald Trump thing and the Democratic side. Um, you know, and, and, and he brought up some really good points. Like if the Democrats wanted to get rid of Donald Trump, you know, they're all like, oh, well, this CV virus thing is to take out Donald Trump. You know, well, if the Democrats wanted to take him out, you know, don't you think they would have come up with some, like, JFK kind of thing? Or, like, rig the voting system, you know, even though Donald Trump is actually the one who rigged the, the voting system to win in 2016, in my opinion. Okay? Just saying, my opinion. You know, and then there's this other extreme from the QAnon where, oh, this... CV virus is to take down all the elites in Hollywood and the Pope and the Vatican. It's, it's, it's so ridiculous. And, and Mike describes this as so much better than me, where he talks about like, there's all these gears, like all of these things that have to happen for these theories on both sides, whether it be QAnon Trump or Democrat deep state Democrats, you know, um, for this CV virus theory to work. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's political chaos. It's outrageous. It's ridiculous, crazy thinking. I mean, it's just, people are not thinking. It's so crazy the way the world's getting. It's ridiculous. And I understand why people voted for Donald Trump. I mean, they wanted change. You know, they wanted... They wanted change. They wanted all this evil stuff to stop happening. You know, but... The way Mike... The way Mike... the Like, what Mike was saying, it's like this Trojan horse. It looks good. It's like this perfectly packaged bow. Like, wolf in sheep's clothing. Looks like he's a Christian. Acts like a Christian. Maybe he is a Christian. But then he's not. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing, you know, like, I'm sorry, guys, but he's not, you know, and he's rolling out the carpet for the Antichrist. It's obvious. He's not a real Christian, guys. He hasn't even asked God for forgiveness and repentance. Going to church doesn't mean you're saved. Taking in Holy Commission doesn't mean you're saved. Saying God bless you and God bless America doesn't mean you're saved. And that doesn't mean you're necessarily a real Christian either. There are a lot of people who think they are Christians and they go out and they do good things. 
or they are they are they just go to church on Sunday and drink and do drugs all the rest of the time that, that's not what saves you you have to repent you have to actually ask for forgiveness which Donald Trump admitted that he hasn't done I mean it's in the video he's on video saying well you know probably not I probably haven't repented I probably haven't asked for forgiveness and people think he's a Christian there's all these red flags. He's not a real Christian, guys. And 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 people, Christians, I mean, if you're a real Christian, you should be able to see this, that he's not a real Christian, okay? There are people that are Christians or who say they're Christians and, and, they're, and there's a lot of, in Israel, borderline idolize and worship this man. They prop him up on a pedestal like he's the Messiah. You guys are putting so much faith and hope into a man. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's crazy. I just don't understand why. You know, there are evangelistic people who read their Bible that borderline worship the ground this man walks on. All because he says, well, you know, I'm not for abortion. But, you know, and I appointed all these judges, but he's not willing to go to the next step, you guys. Where's the next step? <coughs> Where's the bill? Where is it? He's rolling out the red carpet for the Antichrist. I don't understand why you guys can't see that. People are propping him up on a pedestal like he's this Messiah-like figure. They're not looking to Christ for the answers, but they're looking to a man. You know, and I'm going to throw this in there real quick. Anybody who's studying gematria is not good. Anybody who's studying the Mandela effect is not good. Anybody who's going into the Hebrew roots movement is not good. You need to stay away from all those things. You need to stay away from gematria. Stay away from Mandela effect. Stay away from Hebrew roots movement. It's all Trojan horse. All of it. Jesus is coming soon. This is, we are in the end times. You need to put your hope in Jesus. Not in a man. Not in Donald Trump. Not in any man. Not a pastor. Not a friend. Not, not, not a Bible study person on YouTube. You need to read your Bible. You need to pray to Jesus. You need to repent. You need to, exactly what Jesus says in the Bible. Believe on him. Repent and go sin no more. You're not a real Christian if you're out drinking, getting drunk, smoking weed, getting high on drugs, fornicating, cheating on your wife, idolizing Donald Trump because that's what you're doing. You're borderline idolizing him. He said, don't have no idols. And that's what you're doing. You know, and if anybody says otherwise, if anybody says otherwise, if, if, if anybody's against Donald Trump or, or, or set, states these points, then you're just an automatically demonic Democrat. I've never been all Democrat or all Republican. I've voted Republican before. I voted Democrat before. I vote for who I believe is the best person. But right now, it's like, it's so ridiculously crazy. It's ridiculous. You know, it's like, we need, Jesus is the only one who can fix this. Jesus is it. That's it. He's coming soon. It's over. It's signed, sealed, delivered. If you're not ready for Jesus, and you're not repenting, and you're not changing your ways, and go sinning no more, you're not going to make it. Jesus is coming soon. There's nothing that can fix this. No Democrat, no Republican, no Independent can fix this mess of this world, of this wicked world. It's T minus 10. T minus 10, guys. Jesus is coming. You're either ready and you're focusing on Jesus, we need to focus on Jesus. Not all this political BS, because it's all wolves in sheep's clothing. One of them is really, they're just, they put it flat out there. They're pro-choice, 
and they're whatever against guns and blah 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 but the other one is doing the same game but he's lying about it he's just making it look like he's just making it look like Donald Trump is just making it look like he's against abortion and he's for you know he's not going to take your guns away and all the stuff that you know people are like well that's why I like Donald Trump because he's against abortion and he's not going to take our guns away and he's fighting for our rights and blah 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 He's a lying. All of the things that I talked about shows you that he's not a true Christian. He's not. Nothing is going to fix this wickedness. I'm not fooled by Donald Trump. I'm not. He's no different. He is absolutely no different than anything that the Democrats believe in or vice versa. They're not any different. It's the same game, you guys. It's just one is straight out blunt about it and the other one just lies about it. It's the only difference. I don't understand why you guys aren't willing to see that. This political agenda is BS on both sides. They're all running the same game. And Donald Trump's like, yeah, I got everybody fooled. While Jared Kushner and other guys in the background are going, <laughs> rolling out the carpet for the Antichrist. The Antichrist trots in. Antichrist is trotting in right now. And the so-called Christians are fooled. The Bible talked about that too. About how all these lukewarm Christians are going to be deceived as well. And what I don't understand is some of these Christians are evangelists that read their Bible, that actually teach repentance and go sin no more, and they are even fooled. I don't get it. I'm like, what? And I could go through all the points that I did today, and Mike with preparedness could go through all the points like he did this morning. And they're just not going to believe it because they borderline worship Trump. That's why the Bible talks about pride. Pride is so bad and it becomes before the fall of your soul. Because people aren't willing to humble themselves and go, hmm, you know, maybe Trump really isn't a Christian. Hmm, maybe, maybe both sides are working for the same deceived, wicked corruption. It's just one is blatantly obvious and the other ones lie about it. Sorry, my hair is all messed up. I just washed my hair and I don't care what I look like. You know what I mean? I come on here and I just say it, say it, you know, I don't get all prettyfied fied for you. It's just, it's like, it's just, it's just crazy. The thinking of, it's just the thinking of people. It's just, it's crazy. Anyway, so the main thing I want to get out of this message for you guys is again, don't look up to a man. We're in the end days. Jesus Christ is coming soon. We got a tunnel vision on Jesus because the path is narrow. It's very narrow. Heel to toe narrow. It's narrow. Very, very narrow, guys. We can't be going out getting drunk. We can't be going out lying. We can't be going out cussing. We can't be going out smoking weed and doing drugs. We can't be adulterers. We can't be idolaters. All of those things in 1 Corinthians that says all of these things God lists and says you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. It's in 1 Corinthians. Look it up. All of those things. Adulterer, covetousness, idolatry, drunkenness, homosexuality. A lot of people oh, I can't believe you said homosexuality! I had to go, okay, my family want likes me to pray over our meals at family reunions. Okay. So we went out and had this big family reunion and all of us were there. All the people on my dad's side, all the people on my mom's side. And it's really hard to get everybody all together in one place. So I'm like, all right, this is a time where I'm going to do first Corinthians. I read Psalms 91 and I read first Corinthians where it talks about 
No adulterer, no covetousness, no idolatry, no drunkard, no homosexual, no this, no that, no this, goes through all the things, will inherit the kingdom of God. And I said, and if you are on this list, then you need to repent and come to the true salvation of Jesus Christ and obedience in Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm telling you what, people quit drinking real quick. People put their beers down real quick at that family reunion. You know what I mean? And I don't know if they're ever going to let me pray over a meal at a family reunion ever again. But hey, time is short, guys. I can't sugarcoat it for you guys anymore. I can't sugarcoat it for my family anymore. You know? And of course, my mom got up there after me and was like, it's all, it's, it's our heart. It's our heart that matters. It's our heart. You can have a good heart all day long. You can go out and do all the good things all day long. You can believe all day long. I'm trying to get my family to wake up too. But if you're not being obedient, then you don't really have a real relationship with Jesus. I mean, everybody wants this real love and this real commitment, but your real love and commitment and obedience to God isn't there. And then you wonder why, well, I believed. Well, okay, well, that's like saying, well, you can say that you love somebody, but if you're not willing to show it, then what is your love really to that person? It's not. You know, you can say you believe in God. You can say you love God. But if you're not willing to be obedient and show it, then what is that love really? It's not. And this is God. Okay? God. Not just some man or woman that you're thinking about marrying. Okay? Or, or married to. This is the creator of the universe. He died for you. The least you can do is be obedient, not be a drunkard, not be a slanderer, not be greedy, not be all of these things, adulterer, drunkard, homosexual. I mean, you know, all of these things of the flesh, it's very prideful things, all of these things. It's really pride that leads to the destruction of man's souls because they're not willing to humble themselves and go, well, you know, I probably better stop doing that. But no, their pride gets to them and they're like, well, whatever, it feels good, so I'm going to do it anyway. Well, you're going to be really sorry later on by not being obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, it's T minus 10, guys. The Jesus bus is loading up, and if you're not on it, you're going to hell. You know? And I have had to leave friends and family behind because I'm like, listen, you know, I told you how it is. And if you don't, you know, if you don't, if you don't get it, you don't get it. You know, I'm not, I, you know, I'm not willing to take the chance. You know, I'm not willing to take that chance to tell you that. And I'm not willing to take that chance in my life. I love God. I want to be obedient to him. I want to actually show him that I love him. Not just say that I love him. Not just say that I believe in him. Okay, so we got to think about those things and don't be deceived by a man. Full focus on Jesus right now. He's coming soon. Full focus on him. Read your Bible. Pray to him and spread the gospel the best you can to people. They can either take it or leave it, but at least you did what you could to try to tell them in love that Jesus is coming and you got to repent and go sin no more. And people don't like the go sin no more part. They don't like it because that means they got to get rid of very prideful, selfish things of the flesh that they don't want to get rid of. I used to be like that too. I used to go smoke weed and fornicate and say, well, I'm a Christian and I believe and I'm good to go. No. Then when I started reading my Bible, things got real, real quick. Read your Bible, my friends. Read your Bible. Okay? It's already been 40 minutes, so I better quit or it's going to take three days for this video to upload. I hope this message edified you. Get right with Jesus today. He's coming soon. Love you guys.